given a non-empty array containing only positive integers, find mm -hmm. if the array can be partitioned into two subsets such that the sum of elements in both subsets is equal. Hi everyone, we're here today for another Exponent mock interview with Akash. Uh, for those of you who aren't already familiar with Exponent, Exponent helps you get your dream tech career with our online courses, expert coaching, peer-to-peer -peer mock interviewing platform, and interview question database. Check it out at tryexponent.com. All right, thanks so much for being here with us today, Akash. Um, it's great to have you. Uh, would you quickly introduce yourself to our viewers? Sure, yeah. I'm a former software engineer at Google and Amazon. Currently, I'm working for G42 at the sports analytics team. Okay, cool. That sounds like a really cool experience. Um, so let's get right into the question. So our question for today is, given a non-empty array containing only positive integers, find mm -hmm. if the array can be partitioned into two subsets such that the sum of elements in both subsets is equal. Uh-huh. Sure, yeah. So I think like in... By partition, you meant subset explicitly. So if I like try clarifying it further, it's not about subarray. I could pick like individual elements that could that forms potentially a subset actually. So I could pick any element from anywhere and they form a subset actually. If we are looking especially for subsets, not subarrays, right? Yeah. So the subsets can be discontinuous elements. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think like uh, the immediate solution that comes to my mind is like maybe try all possible subsets actually like we go through each subsets and then see like whether we could partition them the array itself into two subsets such that one of them is of like a specific sum and other of them is of the same sum so by that what i meant was let's say we have like k elements we sum all of them so that would be the sum of elements now we could because since we are looking for like partitioning equally actually we could split that sum into two parts like we divided by two so therefore if the sum was target then it becomes target over two actually so if we check for that target over two whether there exists a subset of target over two in our like array actually that would give us the solution because like then we could pick the other half as the other subset basically so does that make sense to you um to clarify target is the sum of the entire array right yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying that we want to try to find two partitions such that each of the partitions has some of target over two. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say is like, if you just find one partition that has the sum as target over two, the other part partition would automatically be like target over two because we have taken all the sum of the elements actually. So. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Um, so how would you go about doing that? Sure, yeah. So I think like I could write like a recursive solution for the problem. So maybe let me share my screen and yeah, let's try implementing it. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is my array. Actually, the nums is something my like my array. And what I would be doing is like as I mentioned, I would first try finding a target actually that is some or all the numbers. And the first thing would be like uh, the nums can be like odd numbers. Like for example, if it were seven or nine or 11, in that case, we won't be able to partition. So I would just return false in that case, actually. And this is because all of the elements are integers, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I have to look for a subset actually with sum as target over two. So I can write like an helper function. Yeah, so this helper function would tell me whether there exists a subset in my nums array with the first i elements for this target actually. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here we would say if target equals zero, that means like we have reached a potential solution because like an empty subset is potentially like an subset with some zero. So we could return true basically. Otherwise what we would do is there are two possibilities. Our i could have gone beyond the length of nums actually or our target would have become less than zero in either case we are returning false actually 
Otherwise, there are two possibilities. Now, either I include the ayat element or I exclude the ayat element. Mm -hmm. So if I include the ayat element, then my target would become like I would then look for target minus nums of i, like where whether there exist and like subset in my array with target minus nums of i. Okay, so here you're basically splitting it into two cases, right? Either our subset will include element i or it won't. Yeah. Okay. So that way we like potentially explore all possible subsets actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this is like a basic version of the solution actually. And if I try optimizing it, like the immediate thing that comes to my mind for the optimization is to like maybe use a cache actually, because what is happening is like each time when we try solving for like much smaller problem, like for example, if I were to solve it for let's say zero, then I'm looking for like whether there exist and like sub array with much smaller length actually and so on and on. So what I could potentially do is like, I could potentially use and cache actually, where I cache this result that way, like my recursion won't take like exponential amount of time actually. Mm -hmm. So a simple modification would be like simply introducing like a dictionary here and passing that dictionary along and using it actually. And similarly, we need to store the result as well when we compute it. Okay, so this cache will always be indexed by two pools then. Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think to optimize this further, I think like since we are using like a 2D kind of cache, actually cache with like right. purple, if we rather than trying to build it like recursively, if we if we were to build it iteratively, again we could have used like two D array, but this time we could try optimizing it further, just using because each time we are depending on like a result of the previous row, like i plus one or i minus one actually. So we yeah. could just store like a previous row actually, and then use it so that we don't need like a two D array. We could do it just with an like an one D array actually. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. See. And um, would you be building that in a bottom up manner or just sort of as you encounter those specific? Input? Yeah, I think it, it, I would be building it in like a bottom up manner, actually. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Are you planning on implementing that or? Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was wondering, like, maybe I could do it on an, like a separate method, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, I think, like the similar version of the recursive, like an iterative version of the recursive one. So rather than trying to build the solution like in a top-down manner, we are trying to build it in a bottom bottom up manner actually. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we had this like for an empty or uh, sub like an empty subset. Actually, we assume that we have in some with zero actually because an empty subset is like potentially with a sum zero and what we do is then we go through each number actually one by one and then like we go the like part the target in the reverse order actually and the reason for that is because we don't want the like uh, values to be overridden so we could have used like an another way actually where we have like a previous row and a current row but like rather than doing that we try going through like from the target till the num actually and then see if 
like we could uh, include the num actually if whether we could include or exclude it so this part like the r part after cache of i minus num that does the inclusion of num in that subset and the other part is like excluding it just keeping like whatever the results we have and then combining both the solutions together actually so each time like again we play the same game whether we include that ith element or num in our like subset or not and like either we could include it or exclude it and based on like whether we found the solution or not actually at the end so it would be like it would have the value true or false depending on whether we found the uh like subset with that specific sum or not right so it's the same as the two case recursive cases from lines 15 and 16 right correct yeah 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 um okay gotcha so i'd love to see you test this on a few test cases sure yeah let's try it out So I was wondering if you could tell us why um, you chose these specific test cases. Sure, yeah. So I think the first one is like, can uh, uh, the numbers are not occurring in consecutive, actually. The subsets, if we see, are like formed between like one and four and three and two. So this covers when they are occurring, like when the subsets are consecutive to each other, actually. And for the second one, we don't have potentially in subset actually it's like the case where the sum is odd actually so that would cover this part actually and the third one again here if we see the subsets are like two and six forms eight and the subsets again are not consecutive they are occurring like one and seven forms one and two and six forms so we need to ensure that like it covers that part as well not just the consecutive part and similarly here again like uh, five six and seven and eight again like uh, it also is similar to this one actually but like more like an consecutive like set of consecutive numbers actually mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think uh, yeah i think this self is not needed because like we don't have a class as such so yes exactly yeah Yep, so I think like the first one is true and this is like the odd one and these two have like one and seven and similarly five and seven and six and eight so. Yeah. Uh -huh. um... Okay, so I think um, are there any other test cases that you can think of. Sure, yeah, I think like uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there could be a lot of things. Like, for example, we tend to consider when the inputs are not valid and like how would it behave when in like the input is empty. And I think like uh, there could be other cases, like much larger test cases as well, that also test like the runtime of this actually. So maybe we could. Uh, like copy the nums couple of time actually like try it on a larger set actually and see how it does like maybe yeah so i think like uh, i think this would be good actually and we could yeah it should return true right yeah um so yeah so one particular case that i thought of that might not be here yet is that currently all of your partitions for for the ones that have true, all of yeah. the partitions are always the same size as each other. It might be sure. good to have one example where the partitions are actually different sizes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's pick the same actually, but like change the last two to size one actually. Yeah, I think last one is the one on which the partition are of like size two and three actually yep yeah that makes sense yeah okay great um so i think this is a great place to pause actually fantastic job in the interview this is a hard question and you managed to come up with 
multiple solutions actually. So that was fantastic. Um, I'd love to hear from you first though, what you thought of this, like what do you think went well and what do you think you would want to improve on? Sure, yeah, I think like, uh, I think I jumped on the solution much quickly. I think I should have explained it further before drilling down into the actual, like how the solution would look like. Although I think like I did try explaining it when I tried implementing it through. So maybe like coming into an agreement on like, whether it works or not, why it works and like so on and on. I think like that could have been probed more actually. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I had a lot of similar points actually, but I wanted to st start out with a lot of the things that I thought you did well. Um, so for example, um, you started out by asking some clarifying questions to make sure that um, the you understood the question well. Um, right. And so I thought that was fantastic. And um, you were able to recognize like ways, first of all, um, before you even try to solve the entire problem, how to short circuit it so that you can return false faster when you can identify that if there's like an odd, uh, if the array sums up to an odd number, then like there can't possibly exist a solution. And that's a really clever way of like making your solution more um, fast, right? And then, um, I also like that you, uh, even though this is technically still a brute force solution, you were able to solve it in um, a more elegant way by breaking it down into um, a recursive case and like reusing previous computations basically. Yeah. And then yeah. later on converting that to a DP solution, um, which I thought was like uh, very clever and really shows the depth of your algorithmic knowledge. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you were also able to identify like inefficiencies in the DP solution too, like how your initial 2D cache was um, stored more than you actually needed it to, and then you were able to improve upon that. So that was excellent. Um, okay, as for things that maybe could be a little bit better. So I'm curious what you think of, um, what are some of the potential disadvantages of this like bottom-up DP solution? Yeah, so I think like, uh, I think like, again, it is like, it saves time on space actually, but sometimes it could be like compute in intensive as well because we have to build the entire tree actually. But in case of like uh, top down, that might not be the case. You might not even need to like while solving for a specific scenario, you might not even need to go branch down to that specific route actually. So yeah, right. that is one. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, basically in bottom up, you have to fill in the entire DP matrix, right? Versus yeah. in top down. You yeah. might not actually need all of those, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that is one thing to consider when trading off between like top down versus bottom up DP. Yeah, yeah, so that's awesome. And I also agree with you that like in an interview, they are a little bit more particular about communication. So even if you already know exactly how um, your algorithm works and how you plan on solving the problem, it does benefit you to like first explain a little bit of like, what is the recurrence relation and like what algorithm are you planning on using to solve yeah. the problem? But I did like that you still continued talking throughout yeah. the interview. So that helped me like um, sort of follow along with what you were doing. And last thing, this is also more like particular to um, interviews though. It helps with real life engineering too. It's just um, a little bit of like code style. Like um, I think you initially maybe intended to put everything in the same class that probably would have been helpful in this case. Yeah, yeah. And also with Python, it helps to um, do type hints and yeah. um, also to be a little bit more descriptive about what your code does. So like to have like maybe a slightly more descriptive method name than iterative, for example, and then maybe add some method comments explaining what each method does. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but otherwise I thought the, clear, the code was pretty clear and I like that it's very modular. So mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Thank you so much Akash for being here. Um, I thought you did an excellent job. And mm -hmm. um, thank you our viewers for watching and good luck with your upcoming interviews. Bye everyone. <laughs> Thanks, bye. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video was valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.